All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Course Creator Community Podcast. I'm your host, Jono, and I am super excited because we have an absolute rock star on the line this week. And I know I say that every week about every guest, but this person actually is. A little bit about him. Uh, he used to run a hypnotherapy course, and he sold over two, a quarter of a million dollars, 250K, I think, in 12 months in this hypnotherapy yep. course, all through podcast guesting. Now, what he does is he teaches other people essentially how to do the same, how to achieve similar results there. So he's still podcast guesting, as you can tell by what he's doing now, and he's generating about $1,000 a day. So without further ado, let me introduce the one and only Mr. Adrian Moreno. Adrian, how are you? What's going on, man? Love the introduction. Thanks a lot for having me. No, thank you for coming on. Um, Do you want to give my listeners a little bit of background, Adrian? Who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? Absolutely. So I like to say I'm a serial entrepreneur more than anything. But in 2014, I promise I'm not going to take you year by year, but I want to give you enough. I want to I want to give you enough context to that question. So in 2014, I experienced a heartbreak. And this is one of those heartbreaks that's a high school heartbreak. So it's the kind of heartbreak where, you know, your whole world comes crumbling down, or at least I thought my whole world came crumbling down. So because I thought my world was crumbling down, I started feeling like my world was crumbling down. So I started acting like my world was crumbling down and I gained a hundred pounds in four years, wow. um, gained a whole bunch of weight and basically lost myself into a deep, deep spiral of depression. And then around that time, uh, a good friend called me out and he just, you know, you know, you know, you need those people in your life to like not sugarcoat anything, but just mm-hmm. to like tell you how it is. And he was like, Adrian, dude, you got fat. He was like, what is wrong with you? Like something happened. And it got me so upset. It shook me and woke me up out of this deep slumber where I was like, what the heck happened to me? Like I used to be, uh, I didn't, one thing I didn't say was before I gained all that weight, I had a six pack. So I used to be in shape. So I was like, I used to be in shape. I used to be this happy go lucky guy. Now all of a sudden you're, you're selling weed and you're living at your mom's house and you are living on the couch. Like what whoa, happened? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What did you, you say? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You skipped that. You say selling weed. You didn't, you didn't, <laughs> that, you didn't mention that part about, is that, that was my entrepreneur journey right there. So the, fu- <laughs> so like the funny thing is you got the, the million dollars selling courses. Now I find out it's, it's selling weed. And the <laughs> Hold on. Not the... did you got that to sell weed. <laughs> no, so look, so look to, to give you some context around that. When I, when I gained all that weight, I lost my job. Okay. And so when I lost my job, like, cause I lost my job because I literally just didn't give a damn. So I wasn't even going to work at times. And so I ended up losing my job. And instead of going and finding another job, I was like, look, at the time I was like a major pothead. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start selling this stuff. And so for over a year, that's how I made all my money was just through selling weed and sitting on the couch all day long, really, really depressed. And then when my friend called me out, said, Adrian, you know, you got fat, just called it out for what it was. That shook me to the point where I finally was able to look at myself like, Adrian, what did you do? This is not who you are. And I was able to separate that person from who I felt like I was. I was like, I'm somebody, I'm not this person. So let me be who I know I am. And I started working out again, like I used to started training and eating the way I used to. And fast forward nine months from that day, I got called fat. I lost 91 pounds. And so I lost the 91 pounds, uh, pretty, you know, uh, just nothing crazy, just eating and eating the right, I mean, eating the right food and training. Then after I lost that weight, I started a fitness business. Now, this is something that you didn't mention in the bio, but I grew my fitness company to about $300,000 in about 18 months. So pretty similar to the hypnotherapy business. And the way that I did that was I hired a mentor, $10,000 I didn't have, but I still hired the mentor and he taught me how to grow my business. And it was very simple. It was, okay, you're going to you know, you're going to uh, send 50 friend requests a day on Facebook to people who look like they need your help. You're going to DM them with the direct offer. I know it sounds grimy, but I did it and it worked. Um, you know, you're going to make two posts a day on Facebook and you're going to make sure one of those posts is an offer and you're going to post seven times a day on your story. It sounds like absolute hell. Oh, and you're going to talk. Oh, I think I already said this, but you're going to DM 50 to 100 people a day. Mm-hmm. And I was doing this. It sounds horrendous. It is. I'm not going to lie. It's a lot of work. But I was able to make, you know, almost $300,000 pretty quickly. Mm. Now, through that fitness, 
through that fitness business, this is the reason why I say I'm like a serial entrepreneur, because through that fitness business, I noticed that if I really want to help my clients to get what they want, I have to be able to change their brain. In other words, if I can yeah. help them, if I can help them rewire the way that their brains are made up. I can help have them lose not only the weight, but lose the person who gained the weight so their whole life changes. And so I started going deep down this rabbit hole of understanding how the mind works, neuropathways, and really studying uh, hypnotherapy and different forms of therapy and became a, a certified hypnotist. So now here I am. I'm a hypnotist, all right? It's an interesting part of my entrepreneur journey, but I was a hypnotist. And I applied all of the same strategies that I learned to grow my fitness business with my hypnotherapy business, but it tanked. It just didn't freaking work. I went six months not getting a client. It was horrible. And then when I was getting clients, it was like 5k one month, 10k the next month, 0,000 for the next two, 0,000, 000, dollars for the next two months, 20,000, oh, 4,000. Like it was all over the place. I wasn't making any real money. And thankfully, I made a lot of money in the year, couple of years prior. So I had a lot of money saved up. But the problem was, was my savings were dwindling away and my bills are still going up. And so I was in this dilemma of like, OK, look, you got some money, but you got no income and the money that you do have is going away in these bills. They're not slowing down. So you're going to end up broke. I got to the point where I had maybe four months left of cash. Like I was like, I'm about to have to move back in with my mom and lose everything. And it was at that point, And this is where, you know, it comes for a full circle. It was at that point where something very interesting happened. And what happened was I hypnotized this one client, changed their life. And that one client happened to have a business mastermind that they ran. And then that client said, hey, this was awesome. I love what you do. Is there any way you can come and speak to my clients? Sure, I can do that. And another thing, a part of my story, another thing I didn't really like uh, say out there, but I'm a trained speaker as well. You know, like um, I do a lot of keynotes and that's like a part of my thing. Um, so I knew how to speak. And so I immediately jumped at the opportunity because I was like, yeah, why not? I, like, I'm, I'm trained for this, so let me do it. Only nine people showed up to that call. But out of those nine, two of them became clients of mine. What happened was Ooh. this. I finished the talk. And so I finished the talk just where I, just standing where I'm at now. And then after I'm done with the talk, I make my way downstairs. And as I'm as, as I'm about on the last two steps, my my leg vibrates. So I reach in my pocket. It's my phone. And it's a message from one of their clients saying, hey, Adrian, how can I work with you? I was like, okay. And I, you know, shit you not. A couple of more steps, another message came through. Another client who was on there and said, hey, that was crazy. I would love to work with you. Like, how can I do that? So I booked sales calls for both of them, closed them both within like 20 minutes. And I made $10,000 from a single talk. And then two days later, Another person reached out and said, hey, Adrian, I just watched the replay of that of that talk. I wasn't on live, but I saw the replay and I have some things coming up that I think you can help me with. Boom. Close him. Fifteen thousand dollars in two, three days from a 60 minute talk. That right there is when the epiphany hit me. The number one way. The number one marketing approach, the best marketing approach is to find the people who have your people and get endorsed by them. Because if you get endorsed by them in front of all of those people, all of those people are now your people. And that was when the epiphany hit me. So I started making lists of how I can get into all of these different masterminds. I was making a list of all these masterminds and all of a sudden an idea hit me, which was why don't you do podcast guessing? Because podcasts are like virtual masterminds. Even if it's a small audience, it's a highly engaged audience. And when you're on a podcast, you have the opportunity to do the most powerful selling approach of all time, which is doing what I'm doing now. And that is storytelling. 
And when you can do that in front of a captivated audience and do it over and over again, you're never to have to worry about clients ever again. So in 2021, I, I mean, 2022, I pitched 122, 121 shows. I got booked on over 52 of those shows and I generated over a quarter million dollars from those podcasts. And now I'm teaching people how to do the same thing. So that answers your question. It's a very long answer <laughs> to your super short question of who are you? What do you do? But I wanted to make sure that you and your audience, because Let's also be frank, like you're meeting me right now at the same time your audience is getting to know me. So I want to make sure you had enough context behind that um, question. But uh, now I'm spending my time showing people how to do this. So that's what I do now. I love it. It's funny. Most people ask that question. They're like, hi, I'm Adrian. I'm from Minnesota. <laughs> you are for about 10 minutes. And nope. where are you? You didn't need all of that. You didn't even say where you were from. Austin, Texas. <laughs> Austin, go. Texas. Born and raised, man. <laughs> awesome. Well, okay. So a couple of things with that. I've got a, a curious question because I I'm in the fitness industry as well. Can I ask who who your mentor was, or can I take a guess? Take a guess. Yeah. Were they were they a specific fitness business mentor? Yes, they were very specific. Only they were helping personal trainers become online. Kind of cheetah stuff. Nope, but I know exactly who you're talking about. No, she's okay. she's awesome. No, but it is Sterling Griffin. Oh, yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. So yeah, Sterling Griffin. That was, he's not doing it anymore. He actually mm -hmm. sold his company to Michael Chu, which is another. Um, I ended up working under Michael Chu as a client for a while as well. But it was Sterling Griffin who did um who was the mentor that I hired back. I hired that mentor in 2018 of October. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, awesome story. Super motivational, super inspiring. Um, the listeners are going to be like, okay, this is awesome. How the hell do I do it? What yep. tips have you got? What's the first thing someone's got to do? Absolutely. So when it comes to getting booked on podcasts, first and foremost, is you have to know your actual bucket that you serve. And what I mean by the bucket that you serve is there are three main buckets that every single business, um, uh, the there's three main buckets that everybody is seeking to fill when they buy something. So when you buy something, you're either seeking to fill your health bucket, your wealth bucket, or your relationship bucket. So chances are, if somebody's listening to this podcast, it's because they're trying to fill their wealth bucket, right? I can imagine and that this entire course, this entire course, this entire podcast, every single episode allows somebody to get new insights that help them make more money with their course, right? Correct. And so you help people fill the wealth bucket. This is very important because as a, so for example, as a hypnotherapist, I can sit here and say, uh, you know, this is a trap, by the way. Oh, yeah, my hypnotherapy, it helps people with their health, wealth and relationships, which is very true. It can. But you need to pick one mm -hmm. because I know that your offer probably helps multiple areas. Right. But the reality is, is if your messaging is focused on every single bucket, your conversions will go down. Yep. And so you need to have your messaging around one thing. So my, for my hypnotherapy business, all of my messaging was around wealth. Hey, if you're an entrepreneur and you're not making the kind of decisions that you need to make, you're not doing what you need to do. And you're feeling some kind of way that's causing a lot of conflict in between you and taking the actions that you need to take to grow your business. I can help you get rid of those emotional problems so you can get out of your own way and make more money in your business and grow. So it was all to do with wealth. Do you see that? So you need to pick your main bucket. What bucket does your course fulfill? My course, Power Pitch Program on how to get booked on podcasts, it fulfills the wealth bucket. So once you get clear on the wealth bucket or whatever your bucket is, right? Wealth, health, or relationships. Once you get clear on that bucket, you then want to ask yourself, what other, who are the main influencers in this bucket, right? So if it comes to the wealth side, I'm probably going to be looking at the grant card and think about people who are like actively alive, all right? But like, you know, the Grant Cardones of the world, I'm going to be thinking about the Frank Kearns, you know, the Dan Henry's, the Russell Brunson's, all of these people who have a vehicle that helps people make more money, whether it's through real estate investing, whether it's through funnels, whether it's through marketing, whether it's through courses, um, all of these people, they have a service, an offer that helps people in their, um, that helps people reach one of those buckets, health, wealth, or relationships. Um, and then when you get clear on all the influencers, you wanna make a big list of who those influencers are. 
Then you go on your podcast app. I'm like giving you guys some of the insights in the course, by the way. But what you want to do is you want to go on your podcast app, look up that influencer, and you're going to see a list of different podcasts that they've been featured on. Now you have a list of shows for you to start writing down for you to pitch. What you need to do, first step, is to build your dream 100. That is to build a list of podcasts. And I don't just mean 100. My first dream 100 was 341 podcasts. So you need to make a list of podcasts that have your listeners. So ask yourself, what is my audience listening to? Because I once went to a pod. I spoke at a mastermind with 40 students. I got done speaking at that mastermind. Every single student booked a session with me and became clients of mine after the talk because I blew their mind. The reason why I ended up making, you know, almost, you know, almost 60 grand in a single day was simply because I got endorsed by their mentor, mm -hmm. right? Michael Chu was their mentor. I got endorsed by him. All of his clients became my clients after the fact. So what you need to do is say, who are my Michael Chu's in the podcasting world? In other words, what podcasts already capture the attention and the trust of my audience? And you need to make a big old list full of those podcasts. But don't just make a list of the podcasts. You want to actually, you know, do some some digging, find their emails, find their, uh, you know, you sh the, the name of them pretty obvious, but find your emails because the emails is what's going to allow you to like pitch them and reach out to them. But the first and foremost step is to make that dream 100 because building that list, there's multiple ways to do it. But the, the way that I gave you, I don't want to overwhelm you. I'm just going to give you that one way. Make a list of the influencers who are in your space. Like for me, who's, who's a big marketing person, Russell Brunson, Frank Kern, um, all of these people, Troy Erickson, I'm going to make their names and I'm going to look up their names on podcasts. And what's going to happen is it's going to show me a bunch of podcasts that they've been featured on. Now I know this podcast is interested in marketing stuff. So I know for a fact that I can pitch them and it's irrelevant to them. It's not completely out of the water. And so you want to make sure you find those podcasts. And keep in mind, you don't want to go to competing podcasts. What I mean by that is perfect example. As a, uh, you know, Let's use my hypnotherapy example, right? Yeah, just use like the the example of me helping people with hypnotherapy. I'm not going to go on another hypnotherapist's podcast, mm. right? I am literally competing with them. I'm not going to go on to their podcast. But what I will do is I'll find a show that's all about, for example, there's a show called Systems for Success. It's all about SOPs, creating SOPs for your business and, you know, systematizing your company so you can sell it. Um, Really awesome show. I pitched the show and I said, you know, you're teaching all these people how to, you know, create all these systems. A lot of them probably aren't even creating the systems because they have doubt, fear, and anxiety that's keeping them from doing it. What I can do is I can help them get rid of that so they can implement the systems you teach them and become successful. Yep. Do you see how that person runs a show about helping people with SOPs? I'm a hypnotist. Mm -hmm. We don't compete with each other at all, mm -hmm. but she helps people grow their business. So do I. I just do it in a different way. Mm -hmm. So now my job is to get on that podcast and show their audience there's a brand new opportunity to get what they want and so you want to find complementary podcast a podcast host who is a complementary one and not a competing one if you're a vegan fitness coach don't go on a vegan fitness coach's show unless they ask you to i wouldn't spend your time pitching them if you help people build courses and you have a strategy for doing it don't pitch people who have shows that teach people how to build courses um, in the same exact way you do it. Here's yeah. another perfect example. You can help people build and sell their courses. Yeah. I can help people sell their courses, but I do it through podcast guesting. You do it through other matters. So we don't compete at all. Instead, I can compliment what you do and say, look, man, uh, I'm going to help them sell some more courses, but it's just going to be through a different meat vehicle. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, you're open to it because you don't see me as a competitor. Some podcast hosts, if they see that you are too similar, like your, your, your niches and your services, they're going to say no. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure you keep that in mind when you're finding that podcast. So does, that's step one. There's three steps of the framework. First is that finding that dream 100. So does that make sense, Jono? Do you have any questions about that? Um, any clarifications around that? No, I think I'm good. So you open up a Google sheet, dream 100, plenty of different ways we can do it. We're going to go the podcast route. 
Uh, you obviously got to have the podcast, the email as well. Yeah, that makes sense. So there's not yep. too much, I guess, screening at this stage. It's just like it's there. It's good enough for now. He's a hundred. Exactly. That like, like a pretty good fit. Exactly. Like I'm finding the podcast that look like they make sense for my offer. Yep. Um, and now another thing is, this is something I should say. So I've been booked on as of today, closer to seventy shows, and um maybe more than 20 of those shows have been like top 1% podcast and top one to top 5%. I've even been on like a top 0.5%, um, which I didn't even know they did. But anyways, um, so I've been on a lot of big, like pretty big shows, but I didn't land these big shows out of the jump. What I did was, was I did at least 20 interviews on smaller podcasts mm -hmm. because then I was able to pitch the big show and say, and if you want some more references about me, yeah, here's 20 plus podcast interviews that yeah, I've done. Yeah. Because when they see, oh, this person I thought was a nobody, but apparently they have over 20 something interviews yeah. on this one topic. And they maybe might this know is a somebody few people. Would... Yeah, exactly. You know? They're like, like you say you said is... that to me, I might not know all 20, but there might be one. You or might two. know oh. one or two. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, he's been on that show. Yeah. Or you may actually personally be friends with because podcast yeah. hosts rub elbows with other yeah. podcast hosts. And well, so I, get like, you know what? I get I get jealous if I see someone in a similar field that's got a guest that I have. Well, they only go on that show and not mine. I gotta get exactly, him on mine but to, you better get on mine. Yeah. See, yeah. now you want me on yours. So that's a very important part. Is it and not not just that, not just you know, like you may know people, but it builds your credibility yeah. in the marketplace. Because if if I said I'm this great person who does this awesome stuff, but you can't find a shred of anything yeah. about me online, you may not book me, right? And so you want to make sure because trust me when I say these bigger shows, they want to dig into who you are to make yeah. sure. Hey, if I'm about to show you the hundreds of thousands, even millions of people. Let me make sure you're somebody who like I really want to vibe with. Yeah. And so keep that in mind. Pitch the smaller shows first. Um, anywhere between five to 20 to 30 reviews. Um, you know, and then start using those to go towards the hundred reviews, two hundred thousand reviews, and you can start going to those bigger shows. So keep that in mind there. Don't go straight for the big shows right out of the gate, unless you're like one of my clients. I have a client named Cam Awesome. This dude has a Netflix documentary, he's really well known. And I'm like, dude, we can get you on big shows right out of the yeah. gate. If you don't have a Netflix documentary or if you don't have that <laughs> big thing behind you, like a huge name um go for the smaller show so keep that in mind all right now we got the dream 100 so once we build a dream 100 now we got to find some kind of way to get on this show which means you guessed it you have to pitch them now if you don't like pitching I'm sorry, but get over it. Pitching is one of the most funnest things in the world, and it's very important if you want to do it, if you want to get on more podcasts. So, and don't worry, guys. I'm also going to show you how to get core sales through these podcasts. All right, so. Dream <laughs> I can't wait. can't wait for that. It's going to be the end of the podcast. You're going to be like, yeah, we're going to get to that. this course. <laughs> but I want to make sure you have everything you need right now. Okay, so the now, okay. So now it comes down to pitching the shows. So when I first had this epiphany of, okay, maybe podcasting might be the thing. Let me give it a shot. In the mastermind I was in, everybody knew this one lady. Um, I'm not going to say her name because I don't want to like down talk anybody, but she's like the queen of podcast guessing. Everybody knows who she is. If okay. you're in this space, you more than likely know who she is. Yeah, I probably know who she is. One or two people yeah. I can think of. Yeah, yeah exactly. And um, she had this course where she taught people how to do it. I was like, all right, cool. She had the done for you offer, then a course. I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy the course. I learned the process. I'm like, okay, looks doable. I pitched 40 shows and 40, four, zero, and crickets. Two, one week, crickets. Yeah. Two weeks, crickets. I'm like, hold on. She said you should at least get a 5 to 10% conversion rate. Mm. I'm like, I got zero. I'm like, okay. So something has to be up. So I was like, okay, so instead of sending another 50 freaking pitches, 40 pitches, let me look at the email that I'm sending and study it and break down why it's not working. So as I look at the email, oh, man, it becomes so apparent to me. It's almost laughable now. I look at the email. 
first mistake is it looks like a chore to read. It is over 800 <laughs> words. That's the first. Johnny, you've gotten those pitches. Don't yeah, lie. Bro, Where you yeah, get a, and you're yeah. just like, oh, my Late. God. Yeah. <laughs> you're just like, oh, I'm probably not going to read that super yeah. long pitch. And plus, I know you get a lot, right? Yeah. Like me, I get boatloads of them. So I'm not going to read every one. That was the first mistake. It, was, it looked like a chore to read. Yeah. The second mistake was I start with me. Mm. There's a big rule in marketing, and you already know this rule, I'm sure. Nobody cares about you. Mm. The only thing they care about is what can you do for me? The only thing they care about is them. So the first half of the pitch, the pitch literally started like this. And by the way, John, I want to know if you've seen these kind of pitches too, but it's, hey, my name is blank yep. and I do blank. Yep. And I think I'll be a great fit for your podcast because blank, blank, mm -hmm. blank. The second word or the first couple of words out of your mouth is your name. Mm -hmm. Number one, they don't care about your name. Mm. And then you're highlighting everything <laughs> that you do. Yeah, number two, number two, your name's in the email on the subject line anyway. And your name's like, it's like, yeah, look, 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 they probably already know your name. They can yeah. get that pretty simply. Yeah. Um, and so the first half of the pitch was all talking about them. Now, as a copywriter, and like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a, I've done a lot of entrepreneurial things. I am like a marketer all the way down to the bone, you know. So I looked at that, and I was like, okay, no wonder why this thing isn't working. I'm like. I'm like, psychologically, this thing is not set up for success. <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, so we got to figure this thing out. So I said, okay, what are my strengths? Okay, I'm an amazing communicator. I know that for a fact. I, um, whenever I speak, I can be powerful with my cadence, my tone, my, 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 my pauses and my body language and my personality. And I know that if in my storytelling, I'm a phenomenal storyteller. So if I... If the host saw that, they would absolutely want me on their show. But I thought, how do I put that into a pitch, though, into an email pitch? Uh, why not turn on my webcam? Mm. Why not tell a story in that pitch? Because it highlights my personality, who I am, the way that I speak, and then I can story tell. And I kept that pitch within less than three minutes. Then I sent that out to 10 people. And by the way, these are, this is not one video that I sent out to 10 people. Mm -hmm. This is per person a video. I made a video per person. I said their name. I said the name of their show. I said why I love their show. And then uh, I went into talking about who I was and what I can do for them. Mm -hmm. And I sent it to 10 people and I got booked on eight shows. That is when I was like... Mm -hmm. Thank you. Crack the code, man. I'm like, let's, let's give this a shot. Now, what you say in that video is important. So I'm going to give you guys the framework of that video, too. I'm being super nice here. Now, the framework of that video is super simple. The key is you definitely want to keep it around two minutes, 30 seconds to three minutes. That's where you want to keep the video. There's three chunks to the videos. The first chunk is connect. So you need to have some form. You need to get the person across the screen to connect personally with you right out of the gate the easiest way to do this is say their name within the first two to three words out of your mouth it should be their name and the name of their show yep. hey blank came across your show blank here on blank and i love what you're doing with the show and then going into why you like the show mm -hmm. right that's the first part all right there's um uh there's specific ways you can connect with them but the overarching the overarching theme is just connect with them right out of the gate. This should take you 10, 15, maybe 20 seconds. Once you go through the connect phase, then you introduce yourself. But you don't just introduce yourself by saying, I'm blank and I do blank. Again, nobody cares. You need to introduce yourself. There's, a, there's an overlying principle here. People don't buy without a reason why. Mm -hmm. If somebody's not bought into why you do what you do, they won't buy into what you do. Think about why people are canceling Disney Plus. People are canceling Disney Plus because of the values of Disney. And people are starting to see and they're like, you know what? I probably just like, I don't got I have not, nothing against them, but I'm just they're seeing, you know what? I like Disney, but all of a sudden I'm learning a little bit more about their why and all of that stuff behind them. And actually, 
not going to give them my money anymore. Right. And so you need to have them. You need to tell them why you do what you do before you tell them what you do. And that is how you introduce yourself. It's why you do what you do before you ever tell them what you do. If you go back to the question when you asked me to tell you about who I was, I didn't answer saying I do this, this, and this. I first and foremost took you back to why, and I brought you through that whole story. And so you need to tell that kind of story through the video. Yes, you want to talk about what you do and the topic you can bring to that show. But you don't bring that topic up until you share the founding story behind that topic. Mm -hmm. So um, now, some well, real quick, does that make sense so far? Yes. Do you want to give us just maybe a quick example? Maybe for give sure, your one, sure. actually. Yeah, maybe just that. You, you don't have to give that full two, three minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you a quick some, example. Yeah, perfect, yeah, yeah. perfect yeah. example. So let's say I already introduced myself. I mean, let's say I already connected with them, right? Yeah. Like, hey, I love your show. Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, connect with them. Again. I know you don't know me, but my name is Adrian. And to make a real long story short, my life was deeply impacted. When I was four years old, standing in my grandmother's living room, looking directly across the window as I saw my dad, strongest man in the world, drop to his knees. And then you go into how that story supports how you created this process. And so what it is, is basically the founding story, because the reason why I introduce myself to a story is because it opens a loop for them. Mm. Now, there's a so as a hypnotist, I love open and close loops. And so stories, what they do is they open a loop. So, for example, I went to go watch this movie by Tom Hanks called News of the Times. Oh. Um, yeah. Do you have you seen it? No, no, no. I thought you were going to say uh, Tom Cruise, Top Gun. And I was going to be oh, like, no. oh, I hope he says no, it. No, not that no, one. That's a good that. movie, though. <laughs> no, I actually saw it a week and a half ago with my nephew. Okay, okay. but um, so I saw, if you haven't seen the news of the times, I'm sorry, I'm about to do a spoiler alert. Just deal with it. So at the beginning of the, at the, beginning of the movie, by the way, I found this movie absurdly boring. But the beginning of the movie, he finds this little girl and the whole mission from that point is he has to get this little girl home. And they're like back in the 1800s, 1700s, maybe 1800s. And so there's no phones and stuff. Like he's literally traveling state to state all around trying to get her back home. The whole movie was so boring. But I could not get out of my seat because I was like, do you get mm -hmm. her home? I was like, I need to know if you get her home yeah. because he opened the loop at the beginning of the movie. I'm like, God, now I need to know, does she get home? Yeah. So when I listen to the way I oh, listen to the way I introduce myself again, I know you don't know me, but my name is Adrian. And to make a long story short, my life was deeply impacted when I was four years old, standing in my grandmother's living room. Now you are into the yeah. story. You're like, what the hell happened? Yeah. Close the loop on this. Yeah. So you want to introduce yourself to a story like that. But there is a big fear that I see come up for a lot of people. And that is, but what if my story is not interesting like that? Mm -hmm. Like Adrian, you brought up this dramatic story of how you didn't feel safe growing up. So now you're a hypnotherapist to help people feel safe. Like that's an awesome story. I don't have that kind of story. I just kind of always like working out. And then I want to start helping people doing it. It's like, I don't know. That is bull crap. So there is um, a book called Scientific Advertising or My Life in Advertising, both of those books actually, but My Life in Advertising, Claude Hopkins. I do not know the actual beer company, but Claude Hopkins gets hired by this beer company to go in and consult them because a beer company was doing, they were the number one in the European market and they wanted to start coming over to the American market and you know become one of the number one selling beers here. And Claude Hopkins, he's, he's, he spends a day consulting with them and then the, the company, uh, they take Claude and they walk Claude Hopkins through the entire beer plant. They show him step by step how beer gets made from point A to point, put it into your belly, right? They showed him how beer gets made the entire process. So they're showing him this entire process. And Claude Hopkins goes, this is the most phenomenal thing I've ever seen. He's like, I did not even know this much went behind to creating your beer. He said, how come you haven't told this in your marketing yet? How come you haven't shared this story in your marketing yet? And then they, they were like, well, because every beer is made like this. They're like, it's not some like super unique approach. Every beer is made like this. 
He said, but no beer company has ever mentioned it. Mm. So why don't you start mentioning it? And that was the foundation of their marketing campaign was sharing why, hey, if you drink this beer, let me show you what it went through to get into this cup. And they went on to become one of the world's leading, uh, U.S.'s leading beer companies after that. So the lesson of that is it's not that you have to find some crazy story or create some super unique story. You just have to tell the story that you're not even telling because all stories are great, but not all stories are told. I can make any story, me walking downstairs, I can make it sound interesting, but you have to be willing to tell it. So all you need to do, and people say, well, what's my story? Why do you do what you do? Mm -hmm. Tell me, why do you do what you do? Now, can you take me back to the moment where you realized I need to do this thing? Like for an example, I have a client who she helps um, nonprofits get funding. She's helped people or get over $100 million in funding. She is phenomenal at what she does. The reason why she works in the space of getting nonprofits funding is because of growing up, her, her, her mom was an alcoholic and she never got her needs met. She never, ever got her needs met. And so now she wants to help nonprofits fund themselves so they can meet all of their needs and never have to have a need go unmet. Do you see there's, there is a story behind you do what you do. You just got to be willing to tell it. And then in that video, you want to end that story with they call to action. So, so many people, they send pitches, they make posts, and they don't have a call to action. You need to, you don't just say, I think I'll be a great fit for your podcast. Yeah, don't leave it at that. Say, I think I'd be a great, look at the pitch I sent you, man. I said, I went you, took you through this entire process. And then at the end, I said, now, if you feel like this would be a great collaboration experience for your audience, let me know what the next best steps are so I can take care of them and get on your calendar. Mm. That is a clear, hey, now that you watch this video, man, here's what to do next. Mm. You need to end it with the CTA. Keep that video within three minutes or less. Sometimes my videos go a little bit over. Doesn't matter. You don't want to go much over four minutes and then send the video over. So once again, you and, and by the way, when you send that video over, you want to have an email with that video that points them to the video, mm. right? Because let's get this. Whenever you send the email I'm going to do a goal check of, while you're doing it, but keep going. Cause I'm going to get yeah. exactly the your one, but sorry, keep going. Okay. Good. Whenever you send that email, what you want to do is you want to direct them straight to the video itself. Now, the goal of that email is to get them to click the video. It's not to get them to get you on their show. It's just to click the video. When they click the video, the goal of that video is to get them on, get you on their show. And so keep that in mind with your first email, keep it under a hundred, keep it under a hundred words. Cause studies show after 107 words, we start losing it. We're like, ah, I don't want to read it. So if you keep it under a hundred words, just get them to watch the video. Like the simplest thing. Hey, shot this video for you. Thank you. Like it, get them to watch the video and they're likely going to watch the video, right? Uh, but that's the whole thing right there. And so that's the, so first is the finding that dream 100. Second is sending that power pitch, which is how I just explained it right now, but doing it through a video and introducing yourself. Uh, I mean, following that three-step framework, connect, introduce yourself to a story, and then call to action. Does that make sense? Gotcha. I've got, can I read your exact message here? Because I think that'll be good yeah. for the listeners. Please, well. yeah, yeah. please go ahead. Awesome. What's up, Jono? Came across your podcast, Course Creator Community, and love what you're doing with the show. I just personally recorded a short three-minute and 15-second video to share with you why your audience can have a really great experience from having me on. Sorry, I tried to, keep, tried to keep it under three minutes. Here it is. Boom. Boom. Look at that. What? That's yep. probably like, what, 30 words, maybe? Yeah. Yep. Around yeah, that. like super short. It was not a chore to read at all. It was like, yeah. bam, yeah. bam, right? Mm. And so that's, thank you for reading that. That's a very good example. All right. So now we got that out of the way. Now we dive into how to actually turn these podcast interviews into course sales. Mm. So the way that you do this is very simple. First is you need to be the kind of guest that gets invited back onto a show where the kind of guest that makes people like forces people to want to follow you. So for example, I got on a sales call one time with the very, if you book a sales call with me, 
I don't do sales calls anymore. But back then, whenever I did a sales call, the very first thing I would say was, hey, you know, saw that you book a call with us. What inspired you to want to get on this phone call today? That's it. So I asked this question and then the prospect on the other line says, I was listening to you on the Business Growth Accelerator show and you talked about your client um, who was dealing with all this doubt and it was getting in the way of him writing his book. I'm dealing with the same thing right now. So when I heard you talking about that, I was like, man, this guy can help me. And do you think they became a client? Absolutely, they became a client. I That didn't happen by accident. That happened because of the way that I structured the interview itself. So even though I'm being interviewed, I control the conversation by answering questions in a very particular way. The way that if you look at what I'm doing right now, almost every question I've answered so far today has been with a story. Mm. Almost every single question you've asked me, I turn it around into a story, right? Like before I even told you the next thing, which is being a power guest, I told you the story of when that person got on a phone call with me, right? What you want to do is you want to answer every single question through a story or through a client story, mm -hmm. right? Like, for example, when it comes to telling your story on video, my client who was a fitness coach, she was like, Adrian, I feel like nobody's going to like my story. I was like, that's bull crap. Just tell your story the way I structured it. Follow the script. She followed the script and she sent six pictures and got booked on six shows. And so that goes to show that it works. And that story that I just said about my client who said, I don't have enough. I don't have a cool story. Chances are there's somebody in the audience who's now like, oh my God, I had the same worry. You know what? I'm definitely going to follow this guy, right? And so when you answer questions through a story, it positions you as somebody who knows what the hell you're doing. And when you're sharing a story, whether it's your story or a client's story of how somebody went through something challenging that somebody in your audience is going through very familiar, uh, very similarly, and how they overcame that challenge, it positions you as a person who can help that client overcome a challenge. So you want to answer every single question through a client's story or your own story, some frame of, you want to have a story that you tell. Like me, I have a list of stories and I know when I get on a show, I'm going to be pulling from this list, right? And so get, it takes, the, it takes, it's a big investment. I mean, it's a worthy investment of your time to like make a Google doc with all the stories that you mm. can like think of. Right. That's a worthy. I have a Google doc full of client stories. And I know the purpose of those stories is to share them on podcasts and on stages. So that's one part of being a power guest, which is what I call the third step dream 100 power pitch. And now the power guest. Now, in order to be a power guest, again, answer every question through a client story. And the most important part here, don't make the mistake that nearly every podcast host, I mean, every podcast guest in the history of podcast guesting makes. And that is this. At the end of every podcast you do, almost every podcast, I've had maybe one podcast where it didn't, they didn't ask me this, but nearly every single podcast host will ask you, Adrian, and if somebody wants to follow you, people want to follow you, how do they do it? You're going to get that question almost every time. Mm. This can make or break the financial gains you see from this. And what I mean by this is most people do this. Yeah, uh, so you can go ahead and you can uh, go to my website here, uh, my Facebook here, uh, my Instagram handles this, um, TikTok, you want to see me dancing, click here. You want to join my email list, you can go here. They list out every freaking way under the sun to reach out to them. As a hypnotherapist who studied human behavior extremely deep, let me remind you guys, that when you present somebody with too many options, you create a problem of, I don't know what to choose now. So if I give you 10 different ways to follow up with me, you're likely not even going to choose one because it's too many options. Mm -hmm. Even if you really, really like me, you're probably still like, ah, oh, dang, I don't really know what I'm going to follow you through. I don't, I don't know. Then you won't follow me, right? And so what you want to do is exactly what I'm going to do at the end of this show. You want to send them to a single link, one link at the end of every single show. And that link should be the same for every single podcast you do. One dedicated link to get them onto your email list. But you have to give them something in return. So if you want to follow me, right? I'm going to, and I'm going to go ahead and go ahead of myself <laughs> right now. But I'm going to basically say, hey, if you want to follow me, I have this PDF 
where the framework I just broke down, I go into more depth and it's all on an organized PDF so it's in front of you. If you want to take this to the next step so you can start implementing, go to blank.com and then go to that website. In order to get that, they need to give me their email. Here's where the magic comes. All of my money is made through email marketing. So now I have their email. And then I, I'm going to give you guys all the, all the beans. So once I get the email, I then have two follow-up sequences in place. The first follow-up sequence is a seven-day soap opera sequence. So this is the kind of sequence that Russell Brunson talks about in Traffic Secrets. You want to have a soap opera sequence, which is a basically at the end of every email, you lead them on to the next email. Tomorrow, I'll tell you X, Y, Z, but you got to open my email. I'll see you there tomorrow, right? And so you keep them engaged all these days. And on day four, I make the first offer. On day five, I make the second offer. On day six, it's a, hey, you still haven't clicked this thing. Chances are you probably have some questions. And I appeal to their logical side. And then on day seven, it's our urgency and FOMO. Yo, the discount's about to be gone. This is about to be gone forever. You need to go ahead and do it right now, right now, right now, or else you're gonna have to pay another $500 to get the same thing, right? It's a lot of urgency. And then boom, they buy. Most of my people buy on email seven, that urgent, that urgent email. That's what most people are gonna buy. And then if they don't buy, I push them off of that sequence. This is all automated, by the way. You wanna go to your CRM and automate this stuff. I push them off of that sequence and throw them onto my daily Seinfeld email sequence. Now, my daily Seinfeld email sequence is exactly that. I'm sending emails every single day. And I mean every day. I don't care if it's Sunday. Every single day, I send an email about nothing. But the email that I send is 85% storytelling. And then the end of it is me making an offer. So if you don't buy my course within the first seven days, for the remainder of your relationship with me, I will be in your email telling you to buy my course every single day. But people are like, but what happens if you sell every single day? Aren't people not going to like you? Depends on how you do it. If you're just every single day, hey, check this offer out, check this offer out, check. No. But if you make the offer like this, here's an example. So the other day I was going through the... Um, I was going to the grocery store. I needed to get some egg whites and some pancakes and some whipped cream for my pancakes. And so as I'm going through the store, and this, this is a daily Seinfeld email, all right? So as I'm going through the store, I walk by the Bang Energy drinks. And I look at it and I'm like, you know what? I'm a little bit tired. And I grab a Bang Energy drink. Why did I take the time to write an email today uh, about, this, about this occurrence? Well, because it teaches a very powerful lesson. If you pay attention, you can make you a lot of money. The, the, so let me break it down for you. First, I go to HEB, our grocery store, to fulfill my other needs. That's first. Second, I walk into the store and I walk by Bang Energy drinks and I'm tired. And so I see another need come up and another solution to solve that need. And then I buy a Bang Energy drink. The reason why this is powerful is because Bang, they leverage the traffic of that grocery store to, to, to um, find people who are in need, like me, whether they know it or not, to sell them their product, whether they went into that store knowing they wanted that product or not. In the same exact way, I leverage podcast. I get on the podcast and I know like the grocery store, they got my traffic coming into them to solve needs. I can help them solve that need through a new opportunity. So I show up on that podcast. I should tell them my story, tell them the new opportunity. And now... They buy the Bang Energy drink. In other words, they buy my course. This is exactly why you need to be podcast guessing because it's going to allow you to get in front of you, right? And so those are the kinds of emails I send every freaking day. They're all stories like that that highlight why they need to buy my course and it ties into why they need to buy the course. So whether you're buying five days, seven days, or 40 days from now, every single email will be another reminder to buy my course. And I rarely get unsubscribers. Uh, I have a 55% open rate, Woo. a 13% click rate. And um, again, we don't, we don't, it's very, maybe in the last uh, 100 subscribers, we got one or two unsubscribers. So it's not a lot of unsubscribes. And so um, the open rate goes to show 
that people like those kind of daily emails because even if they don't buy my course, they learn something. Mm -hmm. And they're like, man, yeah, I'm not going to buy your course, but you just gave me an idea that can make me millions of dollars, right? And so that's the way that you monetize every podcast is you need to make sure, need to make sure that you have a freaking email sequence in place because if you don't, you're just going to buy a car with no money for gas and it's not going to vroom, vroom. If you want it to vroom, vroom, you need to have that email sequence in place. And if you want to kind of model a solid email sequence, download the lead magnet I'm about to share with you in a second and follow my email sequence and watch how it makes you want to buy something. And if it does, buy something. But uh, yeah, man, so that is the full strategy really for how I turn these into, um, you know, actual core sales. Yesterday, uh, I sold over a hundred, over eight hundred dollars through. It's usually over a thousand, but they hit the disc. They got the discount offer, so I sold like eight hundred and seventeen dollars yesterday worth of courses, and I spent the first half of the day rock climbing with a friend, mm -hmm. right? And so it allows you that kind of leverage to pull in traffic that you um, don't need to actually hustle for. Like this one interview, it's gonna pull in traffic months down the line, mm -hmm. and so this is also why it's an evergreen approach. Woo! All right. So much good info know, there. <laughs> down, so break down whatever you need. Any questions you got. Man. Okay. Well, we're a bit short on time. So I'm just going to ask you some rapid fire questions from here. I know you like your stories, Adrian, but let's keep them um, 30 seconds or less. All, All right? right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Number one. Where, what's the link? Where do we go? www.thepowerpitch.co slash PDF. And you're going to go ahead and throw that in the show notes for them. But again, thepowerpitch.co slash PDF. Awesome. This is called my million dollar question. I give you an offer. All right. All you right. Let's do it. Million dollars, cash in, cash in hand, tax free in your bank account today, but you can never go on another podcast again in your life. <laughs> um, what do you take? The million or the podcast? I can make way more than a million through podcast guessing. So I'll definitely do the podcast guessing. Two million. You know what? Actually, podcast guessing is going to help me create joint ventures that can lead to way more, way more. And so I'm still going to go with the podcast guessing, man, because it's going to build my personal brand, which is invaluable down the line. Right. 10 and so 10 million. God, okay. 10 million. Okay. I'll, <laughs> okay. I might go for the 10 million because with that 10 million, I can set myself up for like, I'll be good yeah. forever, but you got me. You got me, man. Everybody has a number. I guess that's I know. It. Well, that's it. That's, that's the whole plan. I'm like, I picked that person's passion and I'm like, what, what's that number? Ooh, uh -huh. I like you. <laughs> All right. Next question. Course creator podcast. Everyone's got their favorite software for the actual course hosting. I've got a feeling I know what you use, but I'm going to ask, what do you use? Experienceify. Oh, I would not have guessed that. Okay. Do you know what that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I follow the, the lady. What's her name? Uh, the girl, I know. I just know the husband. Okay. Which is, but I think it's Marissa. But the yes. husband's Marissa Murgatrude yeah. or something. Yes, there yeah. you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. So I follow, um, now I can't even, I'm blanking out on the husband's name. But anyways, yeah. Oh, Mur Murray. So that is, uh, I, I love it. It's not just a course builder. It's like an experience yeah. builder. It's phenomenal. Yeah. For those people listening, that's, it's probably the best for that. If you don't just want a course, you want it to be an experience. Experienceify is, is probably the Very best. Very true. All right. Um, mentors. So I'm going to ask you three different mentors, Adrian, your best paid mentor, someone that you've paid money to either course or coaching your best unpaid mentor. You haven't paid them, but you follow them on social and a book that you recommend Ooh. everyone should read if they want to sell more online courses. I already know what your book is, uh, but the other two, you know, feel free to, <laughs> My yeah. book. I don't even have a book. Okay. Paid mentor. I'm going to go with Michael Chu. Okay. Uh, I've had a lot of mentors. Best paid mentor. Uh, changed my perspective on what's possible. Not paid mentor, but somebody I'm following on social media. Alex Ramosi. Whoa. Second Blows my mind. Road. Yeah. Each and every day. Phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal. And wait, wait, would you say you already heard that one? My previous podcast. So he's the most popular by, well, it's either him or the, he either gets mentioned on the book or the person to follow like eight out of 10 podcasts. I had a podcast on right before this, you know, same question, Alex Tomosi. So he's, 
Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. eight out of ten. Maybe six out of ten. It's like a gotcha. slightly better than 50-50 chance he'll get That's, mentioned yeah. on either he, the book. He, I'm not surprised. He's phenomenal. So yeah. book. If you don't make at least like a quarter million with this book, then like I'll pay you like a thousand bucks. That's how confident I am. But there's a book called Getting Everything You Can Out of What You've Got by Ooh. Jay Abraham. Getting not- everything you can out of I think it made me oh hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I have it right here. Getting I'm everything have- you can out of all you've got. Getting everything you can out of all you got. This is it right here. Gotta gotcha. Get Twenty. Book. I'm on Amazon now. Twenty-one ways you can outthink, outperform, and out earn the competition. Yes, it is a. I mean, it's just a mind, mind-boggling uh, book for me. Awesome. I've read it maybe like twenty times at this point. Well, so it's, yeah. I'm, I'm on Amazon now. Thirty-five Australian dollars. Buy now. Done. Lovely, so, man. You're gonna your, love your it. reputation's and... on the line, Adrian. All right, so, man. All right, trust me. You're gonna be like, God dang. And I and look, whenever you make your first, you know, couple million through that book, because you absolutely will. Let me know, and we'll I'm go fly thank somewhere you beautiful, it. man. That is true. <laughs> awesome. All right, Adrian. That's pretty much all I wanted to get through. Anything you wanted to finish us off with? Uh, tell your story, and um, don't be afraid to go out there, pitch yourself, and ask for what you want. Because, like Brian Tracy says, the world belongs to those who ask for what they want. Love it. Awesome, Adrian. Thanks for your time.